Three, two, three, four. Young man, I was young once too. I once sang the young man's blues. Women come and women go. Get your high and get your low. One day she's hot, the next she's cold. Women are so seasonal. Women leave again and again. Take it from an old man. Now I sing a different song. One I can depend upon. A simple tune, a steady beat. The music of machinery, you hear that heavy metal sound, the symphony of Hades Town, and in this symphony of mine, a power chord, a power line, the young man, you can strum your lyre, I have strung the world in wire, young man, you can sing your ditty, I conduct the electric city! I think one of the things I personally feel some concern about is whether the art form of theater is actually going to uh, make it much longer into the 21st century. Such an ancient and um, non-technology connected event. Sing a song for me. Make me laugh. Make me weep. In the theaters, we try to sustain and nurture an audience. We, have, we try to have a continuing conversation about life as we're living it on the planet right now. We have all kinds of workshops around that that try to extend or amplify that experience of just sitting in the theater. It's after the second chorus, is that right, Anais? After the second chorus? Yeah. Okay, so when we get to the end of second chorus, after bar 50, repeat bar 37 through 50. I don't think it should ever be the walls. I think it should just be walls. Like, you know, everyone knows that walls have this. To be in a room with people who are 16 years old all the way to 80 years old has really affirmed for me personally that, that theater has great appeal, even in the face of technology. audience members always seem so anxious to have a peek inside the process of making something. Often audiences come to a show without understanding all of the work um, and intentionality that has been put into the process. The key thing that we do is this, a program called the Casebook. We pick one play a season and we attach a class where we follow the production from its inception to the opening night. This idea of Casebook was so that when they sat down to see a play, they had a little bit more information about how it got to be what they see. Each class is designed around one of the production elements. Participants get to interact with the writer, they get to interact uh, on one day with the director, with the actors, with the designers. The members who do participate will never sit in a theater the same way again. We have many programs to support the artists that we believe in. We have a community of artists, about 500, that are called the Usual Suspects. I'm a usual suspect at New York Theatre Workshop, so uh, I think I've known that Casebook is a program here for a while, um, but this is my first personal encounter with it. Aaron Malkin, the dramaturg here at New York Theatre Workshop, reached out and explained what Casebook was and asked whether we would be willing to do it. And I think my initial reaction was, uh, fine, but also protectiveness of a new play process because that's by its very nature is um, clunky and clumsy and, uh, and that's essential that it be allowed to be so. Aaron basically said, if you're willing to be witnessed, then cool. And so Anais and I said yes. We felt that it would be good to do a musical because we hadn't done one thus far. The complications in doing a musical project is that it adds more uh, collaborating artists into the mix. Hades Town is a folk opera that is based on the Orpheus and Eurydice myth, and it was written by Anais Mitchell. Musically, the style is a mix of uh, American idioms, folk, bluegrass, 
blues. This is a really different sort of musical. I don't see this as being a traditional or sort of Broadway musical where like every song sort of completely tells a story and there's an absolute underlying narrative. How long have we been married? Since the world began. I joined the project in 2013 and began developing the story with Aeneas, and it became increasingly clear um, that it was of the utmost importance that everything really remain in the land of a poem. That's one of the first things that Aeneas said to me, was that this is a poetry piece and not a prose piece. Hades, my husband. Hades, my life. The three plus years of development has been this slow move towards making it as coherent and flowing a story as possible that's following both character logic but also music logic because I think it's equal parts concert and play. All right, guys. A few years ago, I was walking through the park and I heard this incredible music being played. The music was so beautiful and it had such a narrative quality to it. And uh, being an artist, I could just see it in my mind. When I saw that there would be a casebook study about it, then I decided I really wanted to participate so I could get to see the process that goes into putting a play together. I took Casebook because I wanted to understand how the New York Theatre Workshop created its magic. This is an opportunity to read a play before I'd seen it performed and to understand how it slept from the page to the stage. The first show that I saw at the New York Theatre Workshop was Lazarus. I left the theatre with a lot to, you know, figure out and understand and that's what I loved about it. I was interested in Casebook because it was something where I'd be able to learn about the creative as well as the financial arc of a production. I called in because I was curious as to the, the actual audience that they were trying to target with this class. What Alex communicated to me was that it's for a wide audience. It fulfills and it satisfies a lot of different curiosities. I mean, I grew up a performer and I built sets and painted. So what I love about it is that it feels like that same kind of spirit, that same sort of sense of community. I wasn't familiar with any other theater companies that were inviting the community in and sharing their process. I was very interested in how all the different factions came together because I myself, would, along with my theater company, uh, would like to do something similar with the uh, musical. Why the struggle, why the strain? Why make trouble, why make scenes? Why There's a moment when the fates are singing along with Hades. And it was very interesting because Rachel was actually blocking that scene when we were watching her. So. They were having like this back and forth, like, you know, oh, where should he travel? Or how should the fates block him? Or should they really get in his face? Or what should he do? Why waste your precious breath? Why beat your handsome brow? You have those moments as, as a creative person that you feel stuck. And then, you know, when you see them do it in such a good scale, you feel encouraged and you feel, look, they figured it out. It was feeling like it was going to be impossible that day, but look at them. They, they did it.
Aeneas and Liam both were talking about the idea that sometimes the music can and should stand on its own. It's a feeling in and of itself that the first priority can't be to push the story forward necessarily in that moment. And I thought that was so interesting and so necessary. I think sometimes we get used to the conventions of how we do things and we don't question it beyond that point. And so I think Hades Town is a coming together of various groups of people. And they come in and they each question each other. They each go, but, but does it have to do that? Do we have to accomplish this? And I think that that creates sort of the best artistic process too, because everybody's holding each other accountable. So taking what four or five different people need and what 15 people have available and figuring out how to make that fit. I mean, it's the, jo the puzzle job of something like a show like Hades Town is unbelievable. Well, and we have another factor in the fact that, that we have the band too, and they're on an 802 contract, so I need to know all their rules. I need to make sure that they're always being used in a useful way too, so they don't feel like they're sitting around doing, you know, it's just the balancing act of that. But, it's yeah. always great to talk to stage management. They usually are, the most aware of all the ins and outs of what's going on you know throughout the process my question is how much choreographically do you record <clears throat> one of the things that's really lucky for us at new york theater workshop is under the equity agreement we have the new media buyout plan which allows us to videotape uh, ah. things for production nice. purposes which is super helpful because I have the run-throughs from today on my laptop as we speak and I'm going to use that to go build my count script tonight and get ready for tech. If you guys have any questions, I'm happy to hang out for a couple minutes. Essentially calling the show is like being a conductor for the show. You have to like wait for it so it can land precisely. You've ever seen like a really great light cue that just like blasts right in time, you know? And sometimes you have to like feel that in your body, which is very different than writing down notes for a rehearsal report, you know? Is like this a template and then you put the ground plan for various shows you're working on or do you recreate it for every show? I do different things for every show. This has no information about what's happening musically, so I'll put things like on the first acoustic guitar chord, Yeah. this portion of the movement happens this happens, you know, so. I've stage managed on a much smaller level with like youth theater shows and no, it's sure. always, um, Rock on. it's never had to capture something with that much movement. So it's every single It's so exciting to see a whole bunch of people that have like varying levels of experience in theater and they just get excited about things like stage management. Like I can't imagine anybody being really excited by paperwork and it's just kind of fun to meet with them. The first thing I said to Rachel Hauck, our set designer, is this takes place in a Greek amphitheater, as well as this idea of let's gather around a tree. I wanted that feeling of a, essentially a campfire storytelling act. So basically, I designed the envelope that holds the play, right? There's so many different ways to realize the very specific intentions of a playwright. It's a very evolving conversation about how that world feels, how that world evolves over the course of the play, what the tone needs to be. Does it need to be tense? Does it need to be light? Does it need to be dark? Ideally, we are all having those conversations together. Lighting, set, sound, costume, because together we're going to make this world. It's deeply collaborative. Rachel always knew that the tree was essential to her. It was the very first conversation. She knew that this tree was a part of it. And what this is based on is this thing here, what that actually is, is it's a real manzanita root. So it both looks like a sort of supernatural tree and like a root, meaning with light, it can feel like it's over you or you can feel like you're under it. Do you, do you understand? Was it based off of the budget and going from the budget to decide exactly what the space needed or was the foundation based off of the artistic conception? We did not know the budget until after everything was designed. <laughs> so we had mistakenly imagined we had more resources than we did. So then we had a, a, a huge um, 
sort of reconceiving of what was possible and we were able to preserve the heart of the design. The to anyone who's not familiar with the artistic process, what can seem like the obvious choice and an inspired moment, that doesn't come without craft and time. And I think more than anything, that's probably what the casebook audiences saw. That its core theater is people coming together to have a conversation. And often the means of production of theater are set aside from that conversation. And the casebook turns that on its head. It's saying, no, audiences can and should interact uh, more closely with the artists. No other theater I know, you know, provides this level of, of access during the development process of a work of art that we're ultimately putting um, on stage as part of our season. We're entering the last week of previews. Previews are just an extension of rehearsal, and we don't know, as artists and as a theater, we don't know what we have until we put it up in front of an audience. There has been a lot of tweaking over the last two weeks in terms of cutting some musical bits, rearranging a little bit of text, but there's been a big question remaining around the final moment, the final thrust of the play. Um, why does Orpheus turn around and what does that mean to us? Which is really the eternal question, as old as the myth. And I'm excited to talk with the casebreakers about it to hear what their perception is of how the play has evolved in the last week and a half, two weeks since they've seen it. The last installment of the class was filled with drama, as theater normally is, because of last minute changes and things like that, so that was exciting. We saw their final dress rehearsal. It was scheduled for a Thursday evening, and it ended up getting moved back to a Friday afternoon. We were all ready to go see the show Thursday night, and they push it back, and what I loved about it is that that's, that's how it has to work. Everything has to serve the show. And Friday evening that was the first preview. In dress rehearsal, you could hardly hear her, but in this one, she was, she so was much amazing. Better than and I, mean, I, I was, was shocked. shocked. It's gotten so much tighter. The choreography is really on. It's it's incredible now just to see the changes. There was none of that. Really singing like <laughs> quietly, dinner, yeah, yeah. softly. You know, he, the he, ending yeah. was changed with yesterday. And I, I spoke to Aaron during the intermission. He didn't even know what it was going to be. For me, it's less about what's revealing and more about what's affirming. That's a great adjustment. That's a really, really great adjustment. The opportunities to be in a place where you can just observe and learn and take in and um, try to uh, look at other techniques and see how things manifest over time from rehearsals to tech to performance um, is a rare opportunity. The most exciting thing about Casebook for me was the discussion after the dress rehearsal because it was like the culmination of all of our conversations before that. We've learned how to be critical in a particular way, not so much criticizing the work but finding out what was the process of the artist to ch make certain choices was a foot from him. His focus and his clarity, it was just so beautiful. I'm trading up to be a patron, knowing all the people and knowing how hard they work and how much they love what they're doing. You just want to be a part of it. I've been so inspired that I've actually volunteered to be an usher during uh, the performances of Hades Town. The people that do go through Casebook with us feel very specially involved with the New York Theatre Workshop on into the future. We've gotten a board member out of our casebook enrollees, many members. I don't think we've found a better way to deeply bond with some of our audience members than this. And that makes me very happy. I think it has really made some uh, friends for life. Thank you all so much for a wonderful 10 weeks. I hope you learned, enjoyed, and uh, and had a fun time. Hear, hear from all of us. Hey, thank, thank you. you. Thank you. People come away with a renewed sense of advocacy for the theater, and people continually want to come back. That's the biggest feedback I get at the end of the classes. What is the next one? When is the next one? How can I sign up?